Welcome to this lecture number 27 on this NPTEL course in fluid mechanics for chemical engineering undergraduate students. The topic of discussion is the application of differential mass and momentum balances to various simple flows that is the solution of Navier-Stokes equations to various simple flow geom in various simple flow geometries such as flow in channels and pipes. In the last lecture lecture number 26 we started the discussion on steady laminar flow in a pipe and we will complete that uh, discussion in this lecture. So, just to remind you we were considering the so called pipe Poiseuille flow okay, or the Hagen Poiseuille flow. Essentially, you have a pipe of some radius r, okay, and let r be the radius of the pipe. And let us say across the length of the pipe, there is a pressure difference P0, PL, P0 is greater than PL, and we will define delta P as P0 minus PL. Okay. So, due to this pressure difference across the ends of the pipe, there will be flow in the pipe and we want to know for example, what is the velocity distribution of the fluid in the pipe as well as what is the suppose if I want a given uh, suppose if I apply a given pressure drop, what is the flow rate volumetric flow rate that will uh, come out of this pipe for a given pressure drop. These are the questions of practical importance in many many industrial applications. Okay. Now, before I proceed with this problem, first thing is to put a coordinate system and I told you in the last lecture that the cylindrical polar coordinates is very convenient in this particular geometry. If you align the z coordinate along the axis of the pipe and r coordinate along the radial direction of the pipe. So, the theta coordinate of the cylindrical polar coordinate system is going around the axis. Okay. Now, you can imagine okay, uh, if in relation to a Cartesian coordinate frame, suppose if I draw the Cartesian coordinate frame in uh, yellow color in the same. So, the z will be pointing in this direction. Okay. You can imagine the x y plane can be ar kept arbitrarily, can be oriented arbitrarily, but suppose the pipe is oriented horizontally in such a manner that gravity is acting perpendicular to the pipe, we can imagine placing the y coordinate in the direction opposite to gravity okay, and therefore, that will automatically fix the x coordinate, because the, uh, uh, the once you fix the two coordinates, then the third coordinate is automatically fixed in a right angle in a orthogonal coordinate system. Okay. So, I am uh, intentionally aligning y in the direction opposite to gravity, uh, of course, uh, you could do it anyway, but uh, just a matter of uh, convenience. So, that is the Cartesian coordinate, but we are going to work with a cylindrical coordinate system. In a cylindrical coordinate system, okay, any you are essentially interested right now in the variation in the x y plane, because things are independent of the z direction. Okay. So, essentially you are interested in the variation in the x y plane. Okay. So, the r coordinate vector will, so you can arbitrarily uh, focus on any plane and the r coordinate will simply be the distance from the center to the uh, 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 distance from the center along the radial direction of the pipe. Okay. Now, we will make the assumptions as uh, usual, okay. the key assumptions are that the flow is steady. If the applied pressure drop is steady, then it is reasonable to expect that the flow is steady. The flow is fully developed, which implies so, let me also write down what this mathematically means, it means that the local time derivative of any quantity, the partial derivative of any quantity with respect to time is 0. Flow is fully developed implies that there is no variation of the flow velocity, the flow velocity is in the z direction, because you are applying a pressure drop in the z direction, the fluid velocity fluid is going to flow in the z direction. Okay. So, there is no variation of the z velocity in the z direction. Okay. So, that is the fully developed flow assumption okay. and the flow is axisymmetric. 
which implies that there is no variation of the flow velocity z in the theta direction. Also it means that v theta is 0, okay. because if, if there, there is no driving force in the theta direction for driving a flow along the theta direction. Uh, and if there is a theta velocity that, that is going to break the symmetry along the uh, axis symmetry along the theta direction. Okay. With these assumptions the continuity equation or the mass conservation equation let us write it as the mass conservation equation essentially became plus Okay. So, there is no variation of z velocity in the z direction, there is no theta velocity axis symmetry. So, this implies that um, partial by partial r of r v r is equal to 0 or this implies that r v r is a constant let us say c 1. So, v r is c 1 by r at r equals r the radius of the pipe the boundary condition is that v r is 0. Okay. So, if you put 0 is c 1 by r which implies that c 1 has to be 0. If the constant c 1 is 0 this equation tells you that v r is 0 everywhere in the domain it is not just 0 on the walls it is 0 everywhere in the domain. So, the continuity equation automatically tells you that if you assume that the flow is axis symmetric and fully developed then there is no reason for us to have a velocity in the r direction in the normal direction. So, that is the input from the continuity equation. The z component the momentum equation okay, there are two components the uh, there are three components the flow component which is the most important and the other two components which are in the r and theta direction. In the r direction so let me uh, just redraw the figure for you you have a pipe okay, and we have aligned okay, uh, gravity we have aligned y like this and x like this and gravity in the minus y direction and flow in the z direction. Okay. So, the gravity vector is pointing in the minus e y minus y direction. So, this is the gravity vector this is the acceleration due to gravity magnitude and the direction of the vector is minus e y. Now, I can write E y resolve E y in terms of E r and E theta as follows E y is simply is simply minus g times sin theta E r plus cos theta E theta. So, g becomes minus g sin theta E r plus g cos theta E theta. Okay. So, if I write down the momentum balance in the r and uh, theta directions okay we will get 0 is minus partial p partial r this is the r momentum minus partial p partial r minus the component of gravity in the r direction which is g sin th minus g sin theta and similarly the theta momentum equation theta momentum equation is minus partial p 1 over r partial theta minus okay uh, i think this is minus g cos theta okay cos there is a minus sign overall therefore it's minus g cos theta so it is minus rho g cos theta if I integrate the first expression okay, with respect to r you will get minus partial p partial r or partial p partial r is minus rho g sin theta. Okay. Now, p if I integrate partially with respect to r I will get minus rho g r sin theta plus a constant which is a function of theta. If I integrate the theta momentum I will get partial p partial theta is minus rho g r cosine theta. Okay. Uh, 
So, if I uh, if I integrate this with respect to uh, okay, let, let me uh, redo this again. If I integrate this uh, the the r momentum with respect to uh, if, if I integrate the r momentum equation with respect to the partially with respect to the r direction. So, integral of sin theta d d theta of cos theta is minus sin theta. So, integral of sin theta is minus cosine theta plus a constant. So, this min there would not be a minus uh, I am sorry this is integrated only with respect to r. So, I will sorry I am not integrating with respect to theta we will come to that later, but the key thing is that this constant will be a function of both theta and z, because I am only partially integrating with respect to r. Likewise, if I integrate this with respect to theta minus I will get minus rho g r and d d theta of sin theta is cos theta. So, integral of cos theta d theta is simply sin theta. Okay. So, minus rho g r uh, sorry sin theta plus some constant d of theta z and if I compare these two uh, sorry d of r z, because I am in integrating this with respect to uh, theta. So, the constant can in general be a function of r and z. So, that if I take the partial derivative of this with respect to theta I get back this. Okay. Now, if I compare these two relations I can say that p has to be okay, minus rho g r sin theta plus this constant cannot be a function of theta and this cannot be not to be consistent this has to be just a constant of z sum of z. So, that partial p partial z will be a function only of z. This is merely the hydrostatic this is the hydrostatic variation of pressure in the y direction. That is because in cylindrical coordinate system okay, if I have r and theta okay, y is nothing but okay, y is nothing but r sin theta. So, this is x okay, this is y okay. if I want to know what is this in terms of r this is x is r cos theta y is r sin theta. So, if I rewrite the pressure okay, pressure becomes minus r sin theta y rho g y plus e of z. Okay. This essentially means that if since I have aligned the pipe in such a manner okay, I have aligned the pipe in the manner such that gravity is like this and y is like this there has to be and z is like this and x is the direction again perpendicular to gravity. Okay. So, it is clear that there cannot be pressure variation hydrostatic pressure variation in the x direction it has to be only in the y direction and that comes through from our analysis okay, that the pressure varies only along the y direction. Okay. Now, let us and the most important input from uh, this uh, momentum balance the normal component of the momentum balance is that is this that the pressure gradient in the z direction is a function at most of z it cannot be a function of r and theta. Now, let us go to the x momentum equation sorry or z momentum the direction of flow is z in the cylindrical coordinate system. So, you will get various terms like this rho partial v z d d t partial t plus v z r theta z. So, v r partial v z partial r plus v theta by r partial v z partial theta plus partial v z partial z is 
minus partial p partial z plus rho g z plus mu 1 over r partial partial r of r partial v z partial r plus 1 over r squared partial squared v z partial theta squared plus partial squared v z by partial z squared. Okay. This is the entire momentum equation in the z direction. Okay. Now, we will knock off terms steady flow means this is 0, there is no r component of velocity means this is 0, the axis symmetry means there is no theta variation this is 0, fully developed means this is 0. So, again if we go in the right side of the momentum balance there is no gravitational force along the flow direction because gravity is oriented perpendicular. So, that is 0 and d p d z is of course, present and it can at most be a function of z we have just seen it uh, seen this from the r, com r component of the momentum balance function of z and here axis symmetry means this is 0 fully developed means this is 0. So, essentially we are left with we are left with minus partial p partial z plus mu times 1 over r partial partial r of r partial v z partial r is 0. Now, we will use the same logic that we use for plane Poisson flow, flow in this gap between two rectangular surfaces through parallel plates okay, which is also driven by pressure driven uh, which was also driven by pressure difference across the ends of the two uh, ends of the channel two ends of the channel. Um, if this is a function only of z, only a function of z and this is a function of r only because v z can be a function only of r it is independent of theta it is independent of z. So, each has to be a constant. So, what is that constant? That constant so minus partial p partial z is some constant let us say f. Okay. So, p is minus f times z okay, plus some other constant let us say g. Okay. We can fix the constant by saying that p at 0, p we can fix these two constants by saying that p at z equal to l is p at l, p at z equal to 0 is p at 0 we will find then that pressure okay, is nothing but. So, we will eliminate the two constants. So, p at 0 is g and p at l is minus f times l plus g. So, p at l is equal to minus f times l plus p 0. So, f is nothing but p 0 minus p l. Okay. Um, divided by L. Okay. So, pressure therefore, becomes P is minus P 0 minus P L divided by L times Z plus G is P 0 from this equation. Okay. Now, from our earlier definition p 0 minus p l is delta p is greater than 0, because pressure in the entrance of the pipe is larger than the pressure at the exit of the pipe. So, p becomes minus delta p by l z plus p 0 and partial p partial z which occurs in the momentum balance becomes minus delta p by l. This is an important input to the z momentum balance okay, from our analysis. So, if you look at this term therefore, this becomes minus del p by l because that is what this is coming. To. Okay. So, the, the z momentum balance after all the simplifications becomes minus delta p by l plus okay. so you have uh, p d p d z is minus delta p by l. So, minus of d p d z will become plus delta p by l. So, okay. so we will have 
plus delta p by l plus mu 1 over r partial partial r of r partial v z partial r is 0. This is the z momentum equation. If I take this to the other side, I will get 1 over r partial partial r r partial v z by partial r is equal to minus delta p by mu l. If I integrate this, if I take this r to the other side, I will get minus delta p by mu l r. If I integrate this once, I will get r partial v z by partial r is minus delta p by mu l r squared by 2 plus a constant c 1. I bring the r this r to the denominator to the other side. Okay. If I do that and then I will get if I and, and then if I integrate the equation I will get v z is minus delta p by mu l times r squared by 4 after integrating plus c 1. Once this r comes here I will get 1 over r here and c 1 by r here and this r will disappear here. Okay. So, I will get c 1 log r because you are integrating 1 over r which becomes log r plus c 2. Now, the boundary conditions to fix this two constants are the following namely that v z at r equals capital R is 0 no slip condition and v z is finite at r equals 0. At r equals 0, if I look at logarithmic natural logarithm of r as a function of r, okay, it goes to 0 at r equals 1, it increases, but for r less than 1, the natural logarithm keeps on going towards minus infinity as r tends to 0. So, log r has a property that it diverges to minus infinity slowly as r tends to 0. Now, if I want v z to be finite, okay, then I cannot have c 1, because if there is c 1, then v z will become infinitely large, logarithmically la infinitely large as r goes to 0. So, c 1 has to be 0. So, v z therefore, becomes Okay. V z therefore, becomes minus delta p by mu l r squared by 4 plus c 2. Now, I can evaluate c 2 by saying that v z at r equals capital R is 0 is minus delta p by mu l capital R squared by 4 plus c 2. So, c 2 becomes delta p by mu l r squared by 4. So, v z of r is nothing but delta p by mu l r squared by 4 times 1 minus r squared by r squared. Okay. This is the final expression for the velocity profile in the pipe. Just as in the channel, the velocity profile is parabolic about the axis. Okay. So, the velocity is 0 at the wall and maximum at the center of the pipe. Now, we can do the same exercise that is carry out the calculate the volumetric flow rate and so on. Okay. We can do that in the following manner. So, to calculate the volumetric flow rate across the pipe, all you have to do is calculate the velocity vector dotted with the suppose this is these uh, the flow direction is E z. So, you want to calculate the volumetric flow rate on a surface whose unit normal is E z. So, you take the velocity vector dotted with n integrated over the cross section of the pipe okay, which is a circle okay, integral over the area of the pipe cross section area of the pipe. Okay. So, this becomes therefore, integral theta is 0 to 2 pi, r is 0 to r, r d theta v z 
dr ok. This is the uh, volumetric flow rate. So, the volumetric flow rate is nothing but now I am going to substitute for V z which is delta p by mu l r squared by 4 ok integral theta is 0 to 2 pi d theta integral r equals 0 to r r d r of 1 minus r squared by r squared. Now, if you notice this, this integrand is independent of theta. So, I can do the theta integral trivially, it will give you a factor of 2 pi. Okay. So, q is 2 pi delta p by mu l r squared by 4 integral r equals 0 to r r minus r cube by r squared d r that is the value of the integral. Okay. So, q is now pi delta p r squared by 2 mu l I am going to I have cancelled this 2 with 4 to get a factor of 2. Okay. Okay, which is what I am carrying over here. Okay. Then, if I do this integral Okay. I get times r squared minus r to the 4 by 4 capital R squared 0 to r. So, therefore, q becomes pi delta p r squared by 2 mu l times capital R squared minus r squared by 4 r to the sorry r to the 4 by 4 r squared. So, this will cancel to give you an r squared here. So, I will get q is, so I will get a factor of 3 over 4. Okay. So, I will get q is nothing but okay, pi delta p r squared. So, I mean now I can write it as r to the 4 by 2 mu l okay, times 1 minus 1 by 4 is 3 over 4. So, 3 over 4. So, q becomes delta p r to the 4 by 8 mu l pi delta p r to the more r to the 4 by 8 times mu times l. Okay. So, this there was a mistake this integral is r squared by 2. So, you have an r squared by 2 here. So, you get 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4 which is 1 by 4. Okay. So, you get a factor of 1 by 4 here. So, you get 4 2 are 8. Okay. So, this is the expression for volumetric flow rate okay, uh, in a pipe when there is a lamina flow. Okay. So, the volumetric flow rate is directly proportional to the radius of the pipe as the fourth power. Okay. We can invert this relation uh, or before I do that the volumetric flow rate is inversely proportional to the viscosity that is for a same pressure drop. Suppose I write this expression in the following way q is pi which is a constant delta p over l which is the pressure drop per unit length across the pipe. Okay. Uh, pi by 8 is a constant to be precise, then I can write this as r to the 4 by mu. Okay. So, if I impose for a given uh, for a given pipe length, if I impose the same pressure difference across the length of the pipe, so delta p by l is a constant, then the flow rate increases with increase in the radius and it decreases with increase in viscosity, because it is difficult to push a liquid with higher viscosity because it offers more resistance to flow. So, it is certainly inversely proportional to the viscosity. Now, I can of course, invert this relation okay, and say delta p by l is 8 q okay, divided by pi r to the 4 8 q mu okay, divided by pi r to the 4. Okay. So, this implies that if I want to fix a given flow rate for a fixed volumetric flow rate, then the delta p by l, okay, it increases as you decrease the 
uh, size of the pipe by radius as 1 over r to the 4, because if you if you want to reduce the pipe dimension, if everything is kept constant that is if I have the same fluid and if I want to pump the same fluid with the same flow rate, if you decrease the pipe by, by a factor of from R 1 to R 2, where R 2 is R 1 by 2, then delta P by L will increase by a factor of 1 over 2 to the 4, okay. that is 1 over 16. So, it will increase by a factor of 16 times when you decrease the pipe diameter by when you half the time pipe diameter. So, this is a major result, but this again to re-emphasize this is valid only for what are called laminar flow, laminar flows. That is as I have told you in the last lecture also, the fact that we are able to obtain one solution to the Navier-Stokes equations after making several assumptions does not mean that one can necessarily get uh, these solutions in experiments. So, the way to check whether the solution is valid or not is to carry out experiments by making flow fluid flow with a given flow rate and measuring the pressure drop or vice versa and checking whether the observed results for the measured pressure drop agrees with this predicted value predicted expression. If it does not then that means that the assumptions that we have made while deriving this equation deriving this expression they are wrong. Okay. And it turns out that for pipe flow, we will see this in a little while later also. Okay. For pipe flow, okay, based on the Reynolds number, which is R e is defined as the average velocity times the diameter of the pipe times rho by mu. Okay if you define the Reynolds number based on average velocity, where the average velocity is nothing but the volumetric flow rate divided by cross sectional area pi r squared. Okay. Then, if the Reynolds number is greater than 2000, then the flow is not laminar. This is what experiments say. While, if the Reynolds number is less than 2000, the flow is certainly laminar and the above expression is valid that is this expression is valid for Reynolds number less than 2000, while it is not valid for Reynolds number greater than 2000. Okay. That is a serious uh, limitation that we have to keep in mind and for Reynolds number greater than 2000 the flow becomes turbulent. Okay. Turbulence follows uh, when the Reynolds number is greater than uh, Reynolds uh, 2000 or around that value. So, we cannot use uh, the laminar flow predictions under such conditions. Okay. Uh, we, will we will return to this problem of flow in a pipe in a slightly different context of uh, looking at this problem from a perspective of non dimensionalizing uh, the problem using various non dimensional groups. And in that context, we were going to we are going to revisit the same expression. But right now, before I just complete this, I'm going to just make two points. Okay. Namely, from here we can calculate the average velocity by dividing this expression by pi r square. You will get the average velocity to be okay, delta p r square by eight mu l is the average velocity. Okay. Now, in a pipe flow the okay, so the average velocity in a pipe flow is delta p r square by 8 mu l. Okay. In a pipe flow one can also find the maximum velocity and that happens to be delta p r square by 16 mu l. This happens directly from the governing uh, laminar flow velocity profile equation, which is right here. Okay. If I write this in terms of uh, average velocity, I will get if I eliminate this delta p r squared by 8 mu l. So, this becomes 2 v bar times 1 minus r squared by r squared. So, the maximum velocity occurs at the center of the pipe when small r is 0 is twice the average velocity. Okay. So, this is another important result, which we already used in the context of kinetic energy correction factors in a pipe. Okay. 
So, V max sorry this should be 4 mu l ok, V max is twice V bar ok. This is an important result again which we used which says that the flow velocity inside a pipe is highly non uniform the maximum velocity is twice the average velocity. And in the context of uh, rectangular channel flows we found that the maximum uh, velocity is 3 by 2 times the average velocity. So, different velocity uh, different geometries have different relations for uh, the maximum and average velocities, but all these go on to say that the flow is non uniform and therefore, the velocity profile will vary from a value of 0 at the wall to something uh, maximum at the center. And how different is the maximum and the average that depends from problem to problem ok. So, now we will return to this problem slightly later when we do dimensional analysis and we will introduce the notion of friction factors which are essentially pressure drops written in a non dimensional way. But right now I am going to move to a slightly different problem that is coating of a wire ok. So, So, essentially the idea is you have a bath of liquid ok and you have a die you want to coat a wire long wire ok. Let us uh, show the wire in a slightly different color you want to coat a long wire ok. and the wire is moving with a velocity you are constantly pulling the wire with a velocity v wall ok v wire you are constantly pulling the wire in this direction and there is fluid liquid in this bath. So, we have a wire a very very long wire infinitely long wire that is being pulled from a bath of a liquid. So, with the intention of coating this wire ok. So, essentially uh, you have a long wire which when it comes out. So, I am drawing the wire with a green colored thing and the fluid ok let us draw it with an orange color ok, okay will be coated as as you pull the wire ok. Now, the radius of the wire is the radius of the wire is r w ok and the radius of the coated wire from the center of the wire to the coated wire is R c ok. So, this so let me draw this in an enlarged way. So, this is the wire surrounding the wire is a coating far away from the exit of the die ok and this is placed in a concentric way. So, although it my diagram is not uh, very accurate in depicting that ok this entire distance from the center of the wire is to the coating this is the coating the liquid coating ok. While this distance is the diameter of the wire ok. Now, the diameter of the die which is of course, another parameter is from the, the radius of the die that is r d ok. So, you have three radii one is the radius of the wire itself the other is radius of the coated wire which is greater than the radius of the wire because the uh, liquid is going to coat the wire and of course, there is a radius of the die in which the wire is moving ok. The goal of our calculation using the differential momentum balance is to find an expression for the coated radius. Can we predict what will be the coated radius ok. Um, in terms of parameters such as the radius of the wire, the radius of the die, the velocity of the of the wire ok. Can we say something ok and that is what we want to solve ok. And uh, another thing that we can uh, ask is what is the force that we must exert on the wire. So, that the wire moves with a constant velocity this is another uh, question of practical interest 
that is if I continuously want to pull the wire with a constant velocity, I have to keep applying a force on the wire okay, and that will be resisted by the fluid motion in the die. Okay. So, our goal is to analyze the what is going to happen for the fluid flow in the die region, in the annular die region. So, I am going to shade it with yellow. So, I am going to be interested in the flow distribution between these two in this region. Okay. Uh, I am not going to worry about the flow in this region, okay, because far away downstream okay, there would not be any viscous drag on the liquid that coats the wire and therefore, the, the all the liquid will move with the constant velocity same as the wire velocity V w. Okay. So, far downstream, okay, downstream away from die exit, the exit of the die. Okay. I am going to have, suppose I have the die moving with velocity V w and the coated fluid. Okay. The coated fluid will have the same velocity, it will move like a rigid body along with the and the velocity profile will be a plug like flow, because there is no shear stress exerted by, there is negligible shear stress exerted by the air surrounding gas on the liquid. So, therefore, there would not be any vari variation in the velocity in the coated annular liquid far away downstream, because it is surrounded by atmospheric air, okay, which is uh, air. So, which is very stationary. So, I can do a simple mass balance. I say that in the downstream side, okay, the volumetric flow rate therefore, of the of the liquid okay, is that q is the area of cross section okay, which is pi times r c square minus r w square times the velocity at which fluid is flowing which is v w. Okay. That is the volumetric flow rate that I would expect okay, far away in the from the downstream of the die exit. Okay. Inside the die volumetric flow rate is nothing but okay, integral r w to r d r equals r w to r equals r d theta 0 to 2 pi d theta okay, times r dr dr times the velocity profile. Okay. So, in order to able, so our goal is to find a relation for R c, our goal is to find what is the coated radius. So, the strategy for our solution is to equate at steady state the volumetric flow rate inside the die should be the same as the volumetric flow rate that comes out of the uh, uh, die far away in the in the downstream. So, at steady state mass conservation says that these two these two q must be the same okay. at steady state q in the die is q at downstream section. So, by equating these two we can find by equating this and this okay, we can find these two expressions we can find an expression the answer for what is the coated radius. But in order to do that, we should we know we should know what is the velocity distribution in the gap of the die. So that was the dis, so what is the velocity distribution here? Okay, what is the velocity distribution? So let's solve that problem first. It's very similar to what we did just now. Uh, that is for a pi flow. Uh, but there are some differences that is the whole point of discussing this application. Now, we are going to use the usual as assumptions, I am going to quickly state them, because we have been explaining the motivation behind these assumptions in far detail from the last two lectures in the last two problems that is. So, the only velocity is v z, okay. the flow is steady, fully developed. 
and axisymmetric same as before. The only velocity is V z and V z is a function only of the radial coordinate r, V r is 0 and V theta is 0. Okay. So, the z component of the momentum balance will imply 0 is and if you align. So, let us write all the three terms first and mu times 1. If you align your die perpendicular to the gravity direction then g z is 0 and since there is no pressure drop that drives the flow in the die it is merely the flow in the die is merely driven by the fact that the wire is being pulled at a constant velocity this is 0. So, the momentum balance simply becomes mu times 1 over r partial partial r of r partial v z partial r is 0. Since mu is a constant that does not matter this implies that r partial v z by partial r is some constant okay. or v z of r is c 1 by r or d v z d r c 1 by r or v z of r is c 1 log r plus c 2. Now, the two constants are determined with by two boundary conditions. namely that V z at r equals r wire is V w the velocity of the wire and V z at the position of the die radius is 0, because if you remember the geometry the wire is being pulled inside the die okay, okay, at this velocity is V w while this velocity is 0. Okay. These are the two boundary conditions to determine the two constants. Now, the key reason for the introduction of this problem is that in the pipe poisonal flow we neglected C 1, because at r equals 0 the solution was blowing up to infinity, okay, it was diverging to infinity. Whereas, in this problem we the flow domain does not involve r equals 0, because the flow domain is basically r equals r wire to r equals r die the radius of the wire is not 0, because wire has finite radius. Therefore, the r equal to 0, which is a point of singularity in the cylindrical coordinate system does not appear in the flow domain. So, there is no reason for us to throw away C 1 in this problem. So, we have to merely retain C 1 and C 2 and fix the two constants by using the two boundary conditions. Okay. So, we have two equations, uh, two boundary conditions for fixing the two constants. So, you have two equations and two unknowns, we can solve them to yield V z of r is okay, equal to V w times logarithm of r by r die the radius radial coordinate by radius of the die logarithm of r wire by r die. This satisfies the two boundary conditions that at r equals r wire you have velocity of the wire at r equals r die logarithm of 1 is 0. So, you have 0 velocity. Having done this we can do what is the volumetric flow rate. The volumetric flow rate is simply 2 pi which is the answer from the theta integral r equals r wire to r die okay, r times v z of r which is log of v w which you can pull log of r by r d by log of r w by r d. Okay. Once I do the integration, okay. so all in order to do this integration we have to know that integral of x ln x d x, because it is of that form is x squared ln x by 2 minus x squared by 4. Okay. This is the only this is obtained by integrating by parts by using the u d v kind of rule. Okay. We can use x ln x as u and x d x as can write it as d of x squared by 2, this can be written as ln x d of x squared by 2 and 
integral of u dv is u v minus integral v du. So, u v x squared by 2 ln x minus integral v du v is x squared by 2 d dx of ln x is 1 over x dx. Okay. So, you get again x squared by 2 x squared by 4 because you have x by 2. So, if you integrate you will get this. Okay. So, this is the only uh, relation you have to know to in order to carry out this integration and the rest is just straightforward algebra. So, q becomes after simplifying v w pi by log r w by r d times half r w squared minus r d squared. This is the volumetric flow rate inside the die minus r w squared ln r w by r d, but this must also be equal to v w times pi r c squared minus r w squared. Okay. Remember far away from uh, the exit the volume velocity profile is uniform. So, we can now equate these two expressions to find what is r c. Okay. So, r c will then become after uh, cancelling a few terms here half r d squared radius of die squared minus radius of y squared y r squared divided by logarithm r d by r w everything raised to the power half. Okay, to the power half. So, this is the radius of the coating in terms of all the other parameters in the problem. Very interestingly, there is no velocity here, the radius of the coating is independent of velocity of velocity of the wire and the viscosity of the fluid through which it is flowing. Okay. And uh, so, it is a function only of the wire and die dimensions, it is independent of the velocity of the wire and the viscosity of the fluid. Okay. Now, another byproduct of this calculation is the shear stress calculation. So, if you want to know what is the force required to pull the wire, okay, you have the wire, you have to find what is the shear stress exerted by the fluid, this is the r coordinate at r equals r wire and that component of the shear stress is tau r z at r equals r times the area of the wire, which is surface area of the wire which is 2 pi r wire times the length of the wire. Okay. Now, tau this is the force, this tau r z is eta times partial v z partial r evaluated r equals r times 2 pi r w l. So, this is nothing but eta times okay, 2 pi. So, after doing this, so if you recall uh, d v z d r is c 1 by r. So, c 1 after, so if you use this expression, so this becomes 2 pi, the force is eta times 2 pi times v w l divided by logarithm r w by r d. Okay. So, this is the force, this is the force exerted by the fluid on the wire. So, since R w is less than R di, this force is negative, because the fluid drag force acts in the direction opposite to flow. The opposite to wire motion. So, the wire is trying to move in the plus z direction, the fluid is trying to exert a force in the minus z direction. So, in order to make the wire move at a constant velocity, you have to apply force x to be exerted on the wire should be minus of that p 
because this will now be in the positive x direction. Okay. So, um, with this we are going to complete our discussion on differential momentum balances. This is a very very vast topic in itself because the solution of Navier Stokes equations uh, using various simplifying approximations or more sophisticated mathematical methods or computational methods is a very very important topic in uh, modern fluid mechanics. But being an introductory course we will have to content ourselves by stopping at this point. Uh, we will uh, return to some applications a little later in the course uh, at the fag end of the course, uh, but right now uh, we will stop at this point and in the next lecture we are going to start a new topic uh, that is dimensional analysis. So, uh, we will see you in the next lecture.